One morning, Princess looked in the mirror. Oh dear, she sighed. I don't know why I'm called Princess. I don't look royal at all. I look just like everyone else. You should wear brighter clothes, said Dotty. And do a lot of smiling, said Lucy. So Princess practiced smiling. It made her jaw ache. Try shaking hands with us all, suggested Back to Front. So Princess shook hands with all the raggy dolls till her arm ached. But she still didn't look royal. Would a crown help? asked Lucy. Crowns are for queens, but she could wear a coronet, agreed Dotty. I have an idea, said Claude. Leave it to me, mes amis. And me, whispered Lucy. Claude baked all morning and Lucy sewed. And by lunchtime, Princess had a new red dress very eye-catching, and a coronet baked out of bread. It looked like polished wood with ruby cherries and diamond sugar crystals. That's better, said Dotty. Let's do something exciting, exclaimed Princess. Something absolutely royal. What about g -g going on a t -t tour, suggested Hi-Fi. Oh, yes, said Princess. That's an excellent idea. So Back to Front made a carriage, big enough to carry them all. He found the bits and pieces in Mr Grimes' workshop, and everyone helped. When it was ready, it looked more like a bicycle than a carriage. <coughs> Hi-Fi sat on the front seat and steered. Lucy sat behind him, holding a flag. Princess sat in the seat of honour. Then came Sad Sack to balance things in the middle. Behind him sat Dotty and behind her sat Claude with a picnic hamper. Back to front sat on the back seat so that he could keep an eye on the road behind. I'll set the pace. Ready, get set, go, said Dotty. One, two, three, four, five. The raggy dolls pedalled in perfect time. They had to because that was the way back to front had fixed the wheels. 97, 98, 99, 100, panted Dotty. She gave up counting and concentrated on pedalling. It was hard work. Good afternoon, raggy dolls, called Pumpernickel. <gasps> What's good about it? puffed Sad Sack. We're on a royal tour, puffed Princess. Are you indeed? And where exactly are you going? asked Pumpernickel. The raggy dolls looked at each other and blinked. Um, we haven't decided yet, said Dotty. Why don't you tour Scarecrow Land, suggested Pumpernickel. You could make sure we're all keeping fit and well. Pumpernickel held up a map showing the land that belonged to Farmer Brown. There were at least 20 fields and several of them had scarecrows guarding the crops. They were marked with crosses. That's me there, see? said Pumpernickel, pointing with his straw finger. Well, that's where we are then, said Dotty. And that's where you go next, said Pumpernickel, to Cousin Tabitha. Send her my greetings. It's an awfully long way, thought Sad Sack. And when they stopped to rest, they could hear bees buzzing amongst the wild flowers. It's ever so nice in the country, sighed Lucy happily. When you stop, it's nice, agreed Sad Sack. Come on, everyone. It's time we were on our way again, said Dotty. I knew it. 
I shouldn't have said anything, said Satsat. The Raggy Dolls followed Dotty's instructions. Right, left, straight on. Don't flag, chaps. Now through that gate. At last, they reached the next cross on Pumpernickel's map. Cousin Tabitha was standing in the middle of the field, looking very cross. The wind had blown her hat away, and her dress was hanging in shreds. Those darn crows, she screeched. They does it on purpose, they does, to aggravate. They've no respect. They pulls bits off me and pecks and pecks and, and lines their nests with me petticoats. Uh, we're on a royal tour, explained Back to Front. P -p -p Pumpernickel sends you his g -g 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 greetings, said Hi-Fi. Oh, does he? Will you tell him to send me some more petticoats? grumbled Cousin Tabitha. They're a darn sight more useful than greetings. The Raggy Dolls thought she was a very disagreeable creature. Even Sad Sack was glad to be on his way again. Stop, called Dotty when they reached the next cross on her map. The Raggy Dolls peered over a gate that led into a cornfield. The corn was quite tall, but it was still green, and they couldn't see a scarecrow anywhere. Suddenly, the Raggy Dolls jumped. It's one of those automatic m m machines explained Hi-Fi. That the, they, they go off bang every half hour to scare the b b birds. Oh, it scared me, whispered Lucy. And me, agreed Princess. Let's be on our way then, said Dotty, before it goes off again. The next scarecrow was made of two broom handles hung with metal strips that tinkled in the breeze. It didn't have a face, so the raggy dolls couldn't talk to it. What about having our picnic here? suggested Sad Sack. Why not? agreed Claude. So he unpacked the hamper and the raggy dolls tucked in with a will. There were sausages and jam tarts and bottles of lemonade. R -r -r Royal tours are fun, aren't they? said Hi Fi. He turned up his headphones so that they could all listen to music while they ate. No one noticed the magpie until it was too late. Down she swooped and caught Princess's coronet in her greedy claws. Jewels! Pretty jewels! Ha! 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 She squawked and flew up into a tree. Zutalo! exclaimed Claude. Oh dear! wailed Princess. R -r -r Raggy dolls to the r -r rescue! cried Hi Fi. But it was too late. The magpie was pecking the coronet to pieces. First she ate the ruby cherries, then she ate the sugar diamonds, then she ate the circle of bread till not a crumb was left. C'est dommage, exclaimed Claude. It is a pity, agreed Dotty. Princess was still sitting by the scarecrow with her head in her hands, trying not to cry. Suddenly, she heard a strange noise. Oh dear, she gasped, and then, help! Because standing over her, looking very fierce, was a huge brown bull. When the other raggy dolls saw it, they jumped on the bicycle and pedaled for all they were worth. Scooping up Princess on the way. It was your red dress that did it, panted back to front. Bulls go mad when they see red, agreed Dotty. Oh, I'm all of a quiver, wailed Lucy. And I've had enough excitement to last me a lifetime. I want to go home and be ordinary again, said Princess. So the raggy dolls went home. When they were safely back in the reject bin, Princess put on her old dress and wrapped the red one in a parcel. She addressed it to Cousin Tabitha, care of the greedy magpie, and left it on the windowsill of Mr. Grimes's washroom. And the magpie must have taken it, because the next time the raggy dolls saw Cousin Tabitha, she was wearing a red petticoat. She looked much less crotchety, and the magpie was perched on her head, helping to keep the crows away. 
It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace Look around and you will find People of every kind Like the raggy dogs Raggy dogs Those like you and me Raggy dogs Raggy dogs Made him perfectly So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees And your fingers are 